Ladies and gentlemen, our final panel discussion for the day. Coming up, as I said, a topic close to our hearts. Now, so far, India has viewed the differently abled people as a category fit for charity. But with growing awareness and increased sensitivity, the consensus that is now emerging is that they need to be provided with equal opportunities. So what policies and regulations are in place to ensure that the differently abled get a fair consideration? Our final session, India's differently abled opportunities, not charity, takes up the case for this section of the society. And we're privileged to have with us Mr. Nipun Malhotra, disability rights activist. Welcome, sir. A privilege to have you here with us, and we look forward to hearing from you. Mr. Rajesh Bhatia, disability rights activist. Welcome, sir. Mr. Girisha Nagaraja Gowda, silver medalist, Paralympics. Let's have a big round of applause. And finally, to moderate this session, we have Ms. Maya Mir Chandani, senior editor from NDTV. Lovely to have all of you here with us, and we're looking forward to a riveting session. A very warm welcome to this special session that we are conducting on opportunities for India's differently abled. Should we change the language that we use around this particular group of people? In the 2011 uh, census, uh, 2.7 crore Indians were in this category. So uh, there are plenty of government schemes, of course, for opportunities, vocational training for many of them. But are they really enough? And when we, uh, in this room full of people in India's corporate universe, talk about growth, inclusive growth, uh, is there space to include them in our growth traje trajectory as well? So in order to discuss that with me, we have uh, Nipun Manotra, uh, an activist uh, on uh, disability issues. We have uh, Rajesh Bhatia as well, and uh, Paralympian uh, Girisha Nagaraja Gauda, who's uh, joining us with this. Um, I'm going to actually uh, throw it open first for discussion. Nipun, I want to ask you first. Um, you were in the news recently. I know the matter has been resolved, but you were taken on a very prominent restaurant and restaurateur in uh, Delhi um, for not being sensitive to the needs of people with uh, special needs. Tell us about that experience. Uh, well, to be very honest with you, before, before I start with that experience, I would like to just give a small comment on the theme of the session, India's differently abled opportunities, not charity. Uh, I would rather much call it India's disabled opportunities on charity because uh, if you really want to change life for the disabled, you have to accept them as disabled. Differently abled is a confusing word because everybody in this world is differently abled. We've heard some extremely talented, differently abled in their own rights people uh, in, this, uh, in, in the last two days of the Mind Mind Summit. We've had great businessmen like Mr. Sunil Munjal, generals like Mr. VP Malik, great administrators like, administrators like Suresh Prabhu. They are all differently abled. Everybody is differently abled. So yes, India's disabled. Uh, India is disabled, opportunity is not charities. And uh, when you talk specifically about the incident at the South Delhi restaurant, yes, it was a humiliating experience because as a policy they said disabled are not allowed inside. And uh, I mean, it was quite shocking. I really didn't know what to do. I sent out a tweet regarding the issue. And I would like to thank NDTV and all other channels that really supported me during this issue. There are a lot of people who came out and said that such discrimination is wrong. And I hope this is a wake-up call for many other people, and nobody else has to go through such humiliation. Right, Nipun, thanks for that comment. Uh, Rajesh Bhatia, Nipun's raised a very interesting uh, comment. We've been caught up for many years in what is a politically correct term to use for a group of people, uh, citizens of India, with special needs. Uh, and Nipun says very clearly, don't call us differently able, because each one of us in this room is differently able. We are people with disabilities, and those disabilities are out there for everyone to see. So I want you to come in on this issue of nomenclature, as well as the kind of schemes that one has. There's plenty of government schemes out there uh, for employment, for financing, for running special centers, etc. How successful or effective are those? Uh, so uh, let me first uh, clarify here that I am actually not an activist. I happen to be a person who met with an accident and uh, 
uh, had to be amputated. Uh, my leg had to be amputated. But I am working in a corporate sector. And uh, uh, you know, from the corporate side, uh, I have not faced uh, any such issues uh, up till now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, where the schemes lack, uh, see, I was hearing so many people speaking uh, some, just a few moments back in the previous session on skills development and everything. Now, even so, for example, 2011 census says there are two point some crore people who are disabled, right? Actually, that figure itself is uh, uh, not correct. Underreported. Underreported because there are about six, more than six crores people who are disabled. Right. So when we are talking of uh, uh, skill development, we are, when we are talking of schemes, the first and the foremost thing is that we have to acknowledge as to what the right number is. And secondly, when we are saying that people need to be employed, you know, depending upon their special abilities, do we have or where is the, uh, there, ha there would be a demand supply gap, you know. Right. So, for example, if I mandate corporates today to hire people from the spatial group, are they skilled enough or how can I uh, skill them so that they are employable? Mm -hmm. So that demand supply gap will work right. and probably those schemes will not work uh, appropriately or not give the desired results. Mm -hmm. So my issue is, first of all, you acknowledge. Secondly, you take a, uh, uh, you identify the root cause as to where the gaps are. Just merely floating a scheme is like, uh, mer uh, you know, floating a law and uh, that's it. So that in, in a sense amounts to what this theme of this discussion is, is charity, not opportunity. Then Absolutely. Because you're floating the scheme, but what happens? What happens next? Mm -hmm. So these six crore people, now there are four, uh, four family members, let's assume, who are dependent on these six people. Do we want these six crore people or 24, uh, 24 crore people to be a burden on the society or to add to the economy of the country, right? So that needs to be looked at. This particular issue look, needs to be looked at from that angle. Right. So skill development is an aspect. Employment opportunities is another, another aspect, aspect that you are actually narrowing down the focus Absolutely. on. Absolutely. As far as... Uh, people with special needs are concerned. And Correct. you're saying that the census figure, it is from 2011 though, so yeah. we're already uh, about four years ahead of that, uh, saying that it's highly underreported in that figure. Girisha, come in on this. The census figures being underreported. Someone like you, you've actually made us proud because you go out there and you're participating in a world of sport. Um, just tell us about your experience. How do you relate to other athletes who don't have special needs like you perhaps? How did they relate to you? India is the you know uh, second uh, highest largest you know uh, populations having in the world the second in India are ten thousand athletes participating in today in the sports especially Paralympics also today you know globally recognized event in our country in our country especially see just see in the Olympic uh, our Olympic able-bodied athletes getting more uh, benefits by corporate sector, government sector. But our Paralympics also, the global sports. In India, actually, corporate sector is not uh, coming forward and uh, supporting for the para-athletes. Mm -hmm. If we want opportunity, we don't want, you know, sympathy. Right. If they give the opportunity, our athletes or our physically challenged people will become a taxpayer for our country. So, uh, uh, today, today, corporate sector also coming forward to look into the uh, Paralympic sports. Tomorrow, uh, more athletes, more Paralympic athletes will, you uh, know, uh, inside of the India. Uh, this is my... Okay, so you're saying that there'll be more athletes and they'll do India proud just the way you are uh, in this uh, sphere. Nipun, I want to bring this back to you because a couple of interesting points have been raised from where you took off. Uh, the idea that we want jobs, we want employment opportunities, we want to be treated uh, with respect as equal citizens of this country. Uh, and there are people who are in a position to do that. What specific areas of employment do you think would be open? Uh, would people consider, uh, in your view? Uh, I think uh, you need to analyze the kind of disability a person firstly has. Mm. 
and then see what are the uh, what are the things that person can still do at an equal level or even better despite that disability or with that disability for example uh, if you look at uh, visually challenged people uh, they have a very good sense of fragments uh, fragrance so maybe they can be useful in the cosmetic industry for testing purposes etc uh, hearing impaired people i know there are a lot of people uh, especially in the auto industry who are hiring hearing impaired people because they're very good with precision work and they're also very uh, and uh, and they're also very good in noisy places like factories etc so they can do very well there now if you look at me i have this problem disability called arthrogryphosis which basically means that i don't have muscles in my arms and legs i could i'm a master in economics i could easily be an economist i could be a cricket analyst but i definitely cannot be a pilot so it's important to see what a person with a disability can do and then skill them accordingly to give, give a kind of a job. And, and now someone like you with your intellect and your communication skills, I mean, you know, there's Siri and there's dictaphone writing where you can just speak into a computer and it types up what you have to say. So you should be out there and sort of leading us in economic research, clearly. Perhaps, I mean... How many companies here would uh, actually be hiring someone like Nipun Monotra because he's a really bright mind? I don't see a single hand up. That's quite unfortunate. <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Um, Rajiv, I want to I want to ask you. Uh, you know, we we talk about looking at the disability and then identifying a skill. And I know there must be many people in this room who annually go every year to the blind school, for example, and buy their Diwali diyas uh, from the blind school. Those are beautifully crafted things made by people who have a disability and impairment. And, and we are doing that. that that's an interesting uh, aside because that is charity, that is an NGO, that's not the formal sector, and yet you're seeing the kind of product you can actually avail of. Uh, I totally agree with you. And, uh, but you know what? Uh, we need to think differently. Uh, not for differently able people, but for everybody. Hmm. In today's world, everybody is talking of entrepreneurship, right? Right. So why can't they be entrepreneurs? Why can't they become job providers rather than job seekers? Right. So can we give them mentors? Can we give them coaching? Can there be a peer networking? Hmm. So let them, let them. Uh, but bef before that happens, I think in India, people do not feel independent enough to even move around, right? right. You go to a country like US. Uh, you are independent. So we're looking to move at around. basic things like accessibility, accessibility in public spaces. In public spaces. Mm -hmm. So let's let the government do the uh, macro level job and leave it to the people to uh, you know to to the private sector, especially now that the CS CSR is in place, right. to uh, to to churn out entrepreneurs, to churn out trainers, trainers train the trainer concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will train others. So let them be job providers rather than job seekers. It's interesting you, you say that because there is, uh, as the restaurant issue uh, indicated discrimination, there's also other places where elevators are a problem, ramps don't exist, these accessibility issues are uh, prominent. Uh, we're, we're also in a week where um, a film called Margarita with a Straw has been making waves in uh, the festival circuit and in theaters across that deals with uh, a particular kind of disability and with empathy. So, uh, Girisha, fundamentally, do you think that people need to understand? You said we don't want sympathy, but that doesn't mean that an empath empathetic ear would not be helpful. Today, in especially in the physically challenged in India, have you know more talent. As a sports person, I want to say you know, uh, in the village area. We have more talented uh, sports personalities, right? But they don't know how to participate, how to come forward to participate for the events, and also they don't know how to get the stage. So can someone guide them? So if anybody support, uh, I came from you know rural background. When I was uh, started sports, that time I was doing I jump in my in front of my home. But that time, no one also not informed me. It is the you know Paralympic sports also here. <laughs> but after uh, you know 13 years, only knows uh, you know it is also Paralympic sports also here in India. If so, if someone hadn't come and told you that, you would never have known. You would have been doing high jump in your school, and that would have just been it. Yeah, you I was doing only uh, competitions to, with uh, able body. Yeah, I was the champion in the university and uh, state uh, state championship in the able body. 
when i was uh, you know going to degree that time somebody informed that after there was this option uh, after university champion somebody informed me then only i come to you know i came uh, uh, bangalore and i participate for the first time national yeah. after when i won the gold medal with the national record that time only they recognized my achievement and give the chance to participate at the international level once i reached the international level then automatically uh, everything got, uh, i knows so everyone also come that time totally society supporting by okay. there okay okay great okay we're going to open this up to questions because we just have a few minutes left but uh, i want to see hands up to ask any of these people yes ma'am someone hands up my question is we talking about physically uh, differently able what about the mentally differently able which is th- a huge challenge as well i think that's an interesting uh, question in fact uh, something i raised with the panelists before we came in uh, nipun i want you to come in on that because there's a whole spectrum out there which is not included in today's discussion oh uh, in fact you would be shocked to hear that the 1995 disability law that is currently in place only recognizes seven disabilities out of which none of them are mentally dis- uh, mental disabilities so mental disabilities is another huge area there is there's a huge indian population that is mentally disabled as rajesh already said that there's a recording problem and uh, we don't even know what is the, what is the number of mentally challenged people in india and there are a lot of good private sc- there are some good private schools that are doing a lot uh, d- taking a big initiative for uh, mentally disabled people there have been a couple of movies that have covered various mental disabilities too but i think this is an important area which the government needs to take into account the 2012 bill bill is still standing in parliament let's hope it it comes up soon it's debated it's passed and we do yeah. become a country of equal opportunity yeah, well? yeah so uh, uh, i totally agree with uh, uh, the lady uh, because even you know when we are passing through the security check at the airports now do you think that sub inspector or the inspector actually knows how to deal with the person who is suffering from autism or somebody who is carrying a, uh, a guide dog i mean to say can he carry a guide dog in the first instance or uh, if he is carrying an oxygen cylinder because he is suffering from some lung disease how do you deal with them so so the question is that area that category is not recognized and that was what my first point was that there is an issue in the uh, data collection itself so as in as nipun pointed out it's we're looking at seven areas of disability and none of them are uh for anything other than physical disability it is ma'am you're right it's a huge area and i wish i had some answers uh for you as well but unfortunately i don't think anyone does right now so go ahead give your yeah, uh, i think i would like to add to that um why it is not recognized second i don't really think so many people really know it um my daughter she went to london to do uh, her second post graduation in dance movement psychotherapy mm-hmm. we got to know that most of you know the colleagues who go from india they don't even come back she is perhaps the only dance movement psychotherapist who is here in north india now we were talking about employability and that's where i'm coming from why are we not looking at it right from birth hmm. most of the most of the parents that we have seen they they actually refuse to even acknowledge recognize that my kid has this problem and it can be addressed at least one person can get to the level of really understanding the world or independently moving in the world mm-hmm. i have seen some good examples but at the same time the government is not supporting so society is not supporting people are not coming forward and these disabilities whether mental or physical they don't come by whether the person is rich or poor and that's where i i think my daughter has come back she's trying to really help out uh, children with special needs but there are so many poor people with this need and not even corporate circle or our society comes forward and really says okay fine enough here i'll help out right there are number of therapies that these kids need so how do we go forward in this that's what i'm looking at so two points that you're making one is that this is a great equalizer there's no rich poor class caste right. at all that, uh, as far as disability is concerned and the second a point of course that you're saying is if we at home acknowledge people within our own families who have needs then perhaps the world would relate to them very differently ma'am i'll just come back to this gentleman here who wants to make a quick point then i'll come back to you yeah my name want to bring to your notice that stephen hawkins is one of the best scientists he invented black hole and he is happily married he is a family 
So I was trying to say, why not do equal opportunity? It should be given by the government and the society and by family. This way they can be, have a, sometimes we say that they should have different school and some right. people say it's the same school. Right, so Nipun, take that on. Uh, the issue of schooling as well. Stephen Hawking is an example that everyone talks about. Um, take that on. Uh, when I was in, when I was go going to go to school, uh, my parents faced a tough decision on whether to send me to a special school for the disabled or to a normal school. And the best decision they've ever taken in their life, I open joke, is that they decided to send me to a normal school because they realized that uh, a person with a physical disability also has to go to an, live a normal life and you know cannot be segregated in the beginning because in the end he will have to face the real world. And my mom knocked through almost all the good schools of Mumbai before she finally found a school. I think she applied to around 20 schools which said no before getting me in. And, uh, the, and I think somebody else also raised the point about uh, the fact that uh, people with disabilities are often uh, kept at home, etc. I got a chance to interact with Kalki, who's the lead actor in Margarita of the Straw recently. And what she told me that for six months she traveled in a wheelchair to get used to the role of a person with a cerebral palsy. And she used to often go to restaurants, etc., where people were so obsessed looking at her wheelchair that they didn't even catch on that it's the actress Kalki Koiklan who's come in. So I think we are just so obsessed about the disability that we don't look at a human being as complete. And uh, that's about it. So the idea, again, once again, it's, it's coming back to the issue of acknowledgement. Ma'am, you wanted to come in and make your follow-up point? It's OK. Uh, one is, of course, that they should be counted in and something done. But what happens, we have no security for them as they get older. There is nothing. I mean, as parents move on, where do they leave those children? Where do they leave those adults? However much money you may have. Right. And in fact, I have friends who are grappling with this issue as uh, they have an only child with special needs and he's now an adult. So uh, where do they leave him? It, uh, there are a few homes I know in the country, but nothing that's uh, worth worth even sort of mentioning right now. Yes, so I need to question that. Uh, taking the same point forward, for example, I have a sister who's challenged and uh, she's 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And I think parents were brave to bring her up as they did. But I think this country also needs to recognize the movement of caregivers group. Because in my own heart, I feel people who take better care of their disabled children physically or mentally, mm -hmm. if they could find enough support uh, in the social uh, circles to and say, look, they are the, not the only ones facing those problems. And we don't, we lack that. Right. I'm going to ask Girisha actually to take that on. Girisha, the idea that. It, what's happening to you is also, in a sense, happening to your family, and therefore it's happening to other families where there are people with special needs. A support structure, uh, did you grow up around a support structure? Do we need more support structures? Yeah, we need, uh, uh, sir, uh, actually said, you know, 60 years uh, mm -hmm. old, you know, uh, lady. But uh, ex uh, I'm the sports person, exactly. I don't know, but after my uh, London Paralympic Games, uh, I started on academy, Paralympic Sports Academy of India through, uh, we are supporting for like uh, uh, people and also we are, you know, recognizing uh, uh, players and uh, after that, uh, you know, uh, we are helping to re uh, represent our country. So this time, uh, you know, what we are uh, telling, corporates, corporates uh, should come forward with uh, ours. And uh, if you need the, you know, if you give the support to us, definitely uh, we will be, you know, uh, last time I said, you know, uh, definitely we will. Uh, uh so Rajiv, you, you come in on this as well. The need for support groups, because we're talking about opportunities, not charity, but there are lots of ancillary issues as well that come up with this idea of opportunity, because uh, as a gentleman said, it is also an emotional strain on the rest of the family. Uh, so here my point of view is that in today's society, when we can't even take care of senior citizens, say for example, if the children leave their parents, then what happens to them? So it's not only, uh, uh, let's say, persons with disabilities, but the overall society, uh, the, the mindset needs to be changed, the thought process needs to be changed, the so social stigma that is attached to it needs to be removed over a period of time, we can't do it immediately, but uh, let's let's look at ways where we make our society more humane, mm -hmm. you know, towards senior citizens, towards animals, towards people with special needs. Why restrict our thought? So I think that, in fact, you've sort of hit the nail on the head. If we become a more humane society, a more inclusive society, perhaps many of these issues will find answers 
uh, as well from within. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I'd like to make a statement and also pose a question. Uh, I think as Nipun correctly, very correctly said that there is a need to normalize, which is something he's always spoken of. Uh, he says it very correctly. But the government has a very key role to play in that normal, you know, normalizing process. So what we really need is targeted legislation to help the disabled, which can only happen if brilliant individuals like Nipun get the opportunity to enter parliament and help legislate on these issues. And that said, I salute Nipun for championing this cause and particularly his mom, Mrs. Malhotra, for you know, championing, championing this cause so selflessly. She's right here in the front for the deserves. rest of the audience. Ma'am, why don't you, you stand and they can all see you. Yeah, there you go. You had a question as well? Or were you asking Nippon to contest the next election? Was that the question? I'm looking to ask the question. I will. I'm <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd like to know from Nippon why he doesn't contest, you know, why he didn't contest this time. So, Nippon, why don't pity, you contest elections? It's a pity that he didn't contest. Unfortunately, there's too much of a premium on grey hair in India, so let me get more grey hair before doing Come on, there's young people in parliament. <laughs> uh, we're trying to get young people in parliament. <laughs> Make that, think about it in the next round. The Delhi elections is a good place to start, sure. but choose your party carefully. That's the only advice I'd give you. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Uh, Rajiv, I want to uh, come back to this point again. On you, you talked about care for the elderly. I think, you know, there is one argument to be made that the elderly who are physically and mentally fit no matter what, have also arrangements to look after themselves or make arrangements to look after themselves if they possibly have the financial wherewithal. But this is specifically a segment of our population that needs to be brought into the mainstream. Absolutely. So when, uh, whenever people are talking of inclusive growth, uh, the politicians and others, I really uh, feel that they are talking about uh, poor, they are talking about uh, uh, females now that's a cliche nowadays so but what about others so that include them in the entire planning exercise right all the ministries should be concerned about uh, people with uh, people with special needs it's not the ministry of social justice you know we are not seeking justice right. we are seeking opportunities hmm. so how do we get those opportunities that's the question. So, Nipun, in your experience, since you are such a vocal advocate for the rights of uh, the disabled, do you interact a lot with government machinery at different levels? And what is your interaction with them all about? Uh, see, I think the first thing that really needs to be done is that uh, universal design, which is a design that makes sure that uh, physical infrastructure is accessible to any elderly person or a person with disability, needs to be adapted at both the public and the private infrastructure. I've interacted with various parties and I've suggested this. Mm -hmm. uh, that just like any commercial enterprise, when it's uh, for, before it's completing cert completion certificate, there has to be a fire NOC that it needs to complete. Why not have a universal design NOC also that it needs to satisfy? Because what that will do is that uh, companies at least will not have the excuse of not hiring people with disabilities because they don't have a disability-friendly toilet or they have too many stairs, etc. And people with disabilities will be able to reach the workplace, etc. So that's one thing I've been advocating with, the, with governments. Governments have finally started at least listening to people with disabilities and giving people like me a space to come and interact with them. So there is an improvement. The glass is half full, but it's also half empty, and that's what... Uh, Uh, where do you, um, and I'll ask you this as the final question, where do you see the NGO sector, where do you see the government, and where do you see the corporates gathered in this room? And I think we might have to end it on that note. Uh, I think the, the NGO sector has been pushing the rights of disabled for quite a long time. However, they also need to realize that change is not drastic, but it happens gradually step by step. And we should welcome whatever happens, but we should also demand for more. Uh, the government, uh, we still have a very old ancient law that is a 1995 disability law in place. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the, I hope the government is listening to, the, to it and comes up with more modern laws and also includes people with disabilities in policy and legislation. Because if it's for us, it has to be by us in that sense. As far as the corporate sector is concerned, I just have one message for, for them. Whenever you see anyone different, maybe not disabled, but maybe of a different caste, religion, gender or sexuality, see him for whatever he is and accept him for whatever he is and not for what he isn't. Thank you.
I think and that's that's actually a great message to end on because in this room there are enough people who have the power to start affecting that change at their own levels and when we start affecting change at our own levels perhaps we can expect greater change from the society at large we'll have to conclude it at that thank you all very much for joining us on this session Mr Pawan Munjal will now be presenting mementos to all our esteemed panelists We have Mr Nipin Malhotra Yes Mr Nipin Malhotra Ms Maya Mirchandani of course who's done a brilliant job of steering the session Mr Rajesh Bhatia Mr Girisha Nagaraj Gowda Yes let's have a louder round of applause